The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. If you've got an idea you'd like to see built, why not send it to The Ben Heck Show? Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. With the Paralympics going on, I thought it would be cool to do a project that shows how electronics can be used for accessibility. I was contacted by a community member who had some exciting news to share and a project request. Hey, uh, my name is Josh Benhart and this is my wife Mary. As you can see, Mary's pregnant and uh, one drawback with uh, being in a chair is trying to move while holding something in my hand. So if we have some sort of way to motorize it so I can move and still have my arms, I'll be able to hold the baby. This won't be an easy project to get done in two weeks, but we'll do as much as we can. The plan is to design a motor assembly that Josh's wheelchair can fit onto. Josh and Mary will visit us at the shop so we can make sure the device works with the chair they bring in. We'll need some beefy motors, motor controllers, and some kind of foot actuated speed and directional controller. We'll start by getting electronics working and then route out and assemble the case that will hold everything and attach to the chair. Let's get started. So Josh had suggested we do a tank-like control. And what he means by that is, you know, think of like a tank. You have two control sticks, one here, one here. And to go forward, you move them both forward. To go backwards, you move them both backwards. To turn, you move one forward, but the other one backwards. So each stick actually controls a tread or a wheel. And then with your foot, you'd have your foot here. This is a side view. Here's your shoelaces, right? And then there'd be a pedal here, which would be your forward control, and a pedal here that would be your backwards control. So you'd either click down or up to go forward and backwards. However, I think there might be kind of a limitation with that. So if you're sitting in your chair, if you're at rest, your feet are going to be down. But if we use the foot pedal idea, pushing your feet down will cause you to go forward eternally. And I guess there could be a disable, but that's like another thing you have to push. Also, to go backwards, you have to lift your feet up, which is kind of unnatural. And the rest position would be holding your feet in air between the pedals. So if we don't do it with a foot pedal, I'm thinking maybe we should do some sort of joystick. Maybe some sort of rounded dome that you could move with your foot, kind of like a, uh, a track ball, but for your, for your feet. So we have a potentiometer here for the x-axis and one in the other direction for the y-axis, although it'd probably just be easier to use a little uh, joystick package that we can pull out of any old video game controller that looks like that. So I think what we'll do is we'll print up a dome and then see if we can fit it onto a joystick. Here is a drawing of potentiometer that's going to be for our joystick. Now, of course, the correct symbol for potentiometer is that, which means it's a variable resistor, but we'll show it here. So on either end, you know, you have your resistance, which in this case is going to be about 10K. And then you have your wiper. This is actually what senses. So you just hook up one side to ground and another side to 5 volts or whatever your reference voltage is going to be. And then the wiper goes from this side to this side. So you're either going to be closer to positive 5 volts or closer to ground. And then your ADC, which is your analog digital converter, takes that analog value and converts it into a digital value, which then your program can use. So in this case, moving the joystick this way causes the motor to go forward. It increasing speeds and going this way will cause it to go backwards. And then left and right will also do things, but we'll just start with making it go forward and backward. Now the uh, AT Mega 328 has a six bit ADC, which means it goes values from zero to 1023. So in the center, we see on the screen, we're running about 509. So we want to have kind of like a dead zone, your favorite Stephen King book, where you have to move it a certain amount before it'll actually trigger or start the thing to move. So we'll probably set up a dead zone of about uh, 600 to uh, 1023, and the lower side will probably go about 400 to down to zero. All right, so now I have some dead zone on the stick where just jiggling it won't do anything. Well, shouldn't do anything. So it, has a, it says stop, but then as you go forward, you see the amount it goes higher, forward full speed, and then also reverse. So the next thing we'll do is hook this up to that motor controller out there. We don't have all the parts yet, but we should have enough 
to at least make the motor go forward and backward based off this controller. Before I hook this up to the actual circuitry, I just want to do one more demonstration. We have an LED here, which is hooked up to the pulse width modulation output. So as I increase the speed in the joystick, you see the LED getting brighter. That'll represent the motor going faster and slower. And then you can also see it represented on the oscilloscope. So the, the short pulses, and they go up to the higher pulses. So next I'm gonna hook it up to this H-Bridge uh, DC motor driver, and then we should actually be able to get the motors to turn based off this joystick. I'm gonna talk about the H-Bridge a little bit. Now, if you have a normal DC motor like this, you can change the direction that it rotates by reversing the polarity going to it. Okay, it goes one way, and if you reverse the polarity, it goes the other. Now what an H-Bridge does is it allows you to reverse the polarity electronically in a circuit. Now we'll just use a physical switch example here. Let's say this is our motor. And just like the motor I had, the small motor I had in my hands, it has two terminals that power it. So to reverse the motor, you put positive here and negative here, or positive here and negative here. Now here's how you do that with an H-Bridge. See how it kind of makes an H? That's where the H comes from. And you have four, well, we'll call them switches right now, but they use MOSFETs. So if you energize this one and this one, you have positive, negative on the motor. If you trigger this one and this one, you have positive here and negative here. So the motor goes in two different directions. And what they usually use are things called MOSFETs, which are metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. Okay, so here we've drawn in the MOSFETs. They each have a drain, source, and a gate. Typically drain goes to the positive voltage, source goes to the negative voltage, and gate is what's controlled by your integrated circuit or microcontroller. So we'd put a one on these gates here in order to go that way, and we put a one on these gates here in order to go that way. And uh, MOSFETs can switch high currents, so you can use your low power five volt device to switch a high current, a 24 volt or 50 volt motor. Here's an H-Bridge motor driver. You can see the four MOSFETs there, just like on our drawing. And then you hook up the motor to the two inner pins. And then you select, it. Uh, there's a direction pin. It's high or low, which means um, you know, which way you're driving the MOSFETs. And then for the speed, how often you drive the MOSFETs, the pulses, you pulse it in on one of these pins here. It's going crazy! <laughs> so we see how this can drive the motor forward and back. And then we can also use the left and right uh, axes on the joystick to do other motions. We actually need two of these motor drivers, one for each wheel. All right, here are the four basic directions we can move the chair. And what we're gonna have to figure out now is how to actually impulse the motors in what order. Um, these two numbers represent the pulse width modulation, basically full speed, and then direction. Direction's either one or zero for forward or back. So if you wanna make the chair go forward, you have both motors going full tilt. If you go backwards, they're both going full tilt, but with a different direction. That's not so hard, but where the kind of the tricky stuff comes in is turning left and right. Now the chair would be like a tank. If you actually want to turn directly left, one wheel will go backwards and then one will go forwards, or right, it'll be the other way around. So what we have to do is make all the in-between make sense too. I mean, it'd be easy to just say both motors forward, both motors backwards, you know, inverse, inverse. But we want to have like some analog stuff in there as well, so. Are you an engineer? Do you like getting your hands on the latest technology? Do you like free stuff? Then you should head over to the Element 14 site so you can check out the road test program where they'll send you free products in exchange for your feedback. Here's how it works. Start by visiting element14.com to log in or register for free. You can also access road tests at any time by visiting element14.com forward slash road test. Here you'll find information on all the current products available to their road testers in a simple enrollment form and be sure to tell them why you'd be a great road tester for that product. You can enroll in as many road tests as you like. There's no limit to the number of products you can test. If you're selected to be a tester, your free products will be shipped right to your door. The new equipment is 100% yours to keep. No contracts, returns, or purchases necessary. After you've become an expert with your new e-gear, head back to the element14.com community and let everyone know what you think. Sounds like a sweet deal to me. Go to element14.com forward slash road test to enroll today. Now, back to the show. All right, so here's our motor controllers. Here we have two uh, scooter batteries. I'm gonna put them together to make 24 volts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach some uh, connections to them. All right, so here's our batteries in series, which gives us 24 volts. We can uh, switch it on. And then down here, we're gonna double check that we're getting the right voltage off our regulator for the, for the microcontroller. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Okay, yep. 
So that's working correctly, five volts for the microcontroller. So it's good to just test one thing at a time. We don't hook everything up and turn it on. We hook up one thing, make sure it works. Hook up the next thing, make sure it works. The reason we do it that way is because if you hook up everything at once and it doesn't work, you don't know where the fail point is. All right, here's our test rig. We've got our motors, they're hooked up to the controllers, and we've got our 24 volt battery. So here we go. All right. Did we hook up something wrong, I wonder? Oh, do we have the brakes on? <laughs> they definitely move fast. Okay, let's try this. Okay, this one should turn off. Ooh, hello. <laughs> it went crazy. All right, so this is the actuator we made in the 3D printer. All right, I'm gonna put a few more things into it, such as um, if it does get stuck on, it should reset the processor, you know, like a fail safe. And then we can have, I have a little buzzer here so it can like beep if it's over -currenting. but uh, so far so good. We're closer than we were. We're here with uh, Josh Benhart. Hi. <laughs> and we're going to help him motorize his wheelchair with foot control. <laughs> so let's test this out. Work. This is some engineering feat. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna work great. That'll be very good. Yeah, give it a try. I think there's a pretty good chance you won't crash your <laughs> Back you up. See, we're generating electricity now. The theory should lift up. Pull that out. Just like that. You put a herring handle on it, you take it to the airport. Oh, it's not light. Okay, positive wire going in there. Negative return. Nice. So we have it mechanically built, and it can move a person around. However, we're running into some problems. When we do it full speed, there's some uh, chugging, which might be due to our ramping issue. Also, we need to you know, make sure it's safe, basically get every fail safe in it that we have. Uh, uh, Josh and Mary are hired back today, so we'll probably have to get this done for them at a later date and ship it on to them, but we certainly got the concept proven. Uh, making a add-on drive system that fits inside the contours of an existing wheelchair. That's all the time we have for today. On our next episode, we're going to do a flashback to the 1980s and make a cool pocket experimenter's computer. We'll see you then. Come to element14.com forward slash TBHS to register to win the exclusive Bobblehead Grand Prize and follow at element14 on Twitter to find out more details on how you can win Ben Heck Show t-shirts for spotting the Bobblehead within each new episode throughout the season. 